So good morning, everybody. <coughs> so what the idea is to, to have a chat and basically give you some uh, insight about you know, the dynamic of M&A that affect this industry. So in general, gaming on a B2C and a B2B side, as well as e-sport. So oh, you know, quick presentation. Um, I'm Christian Tirabassi. I'm, I'm founder and a senior partner of Facom Leisure. We are an advisory boutique specialized only in the gaming industry. So with all the segment of the gaming industry, so the traditional gambling side, so real money gaming, and as well as all the social, e-sport, fantasy, and so on. We work globally um, in all the market, regulated market, and we basically focus on strategic advisory and sell side and buy side advisory. So, um, we would like to give uh, <coughs> you know, our perspective and uh, possibly have some of your guys' feedbacks regarding uh, the dynamic of the, the M&A in this industry, both on the B2B and on the, B2B, on the B2C side. So, uh, you know, we've been around quite some time, uh, been doing this since uh, 1996. We have uh, um, acted on the sell side and buy side for a number of uh, uh, real money gaming, bookmaker, casino operator, uh, and recently obviously for some uh, uh, casual or skill game B2B and B2C operator, uh, advising them <coughs> both on the strategy uh, uh, in order to play a role in the consolidation or in the M&A, either on the buy side or the sell side, either to uh, run a process. So, you know, we, we have a number of clients that come to us either to raise funds or to, um, at the moment that they feel that's the right uh, maturity level, to uh, basically run a sell-side process in order to try to capitalize uh, uh, the position in the market. <sighs> Again, uh, you know, all the segment cover, all the segment, we're extremely vertical. So our, our approach is we're trying to understand really the value of the company because we understand uh, the dynamic of this industry, this industry where you guys are extremely well. So <clears throat> I'd like to uh, focus on basically the, the main dynamics. So what we see at the global level, uh, both on a B2B and a B2C, and when I say B2B, basically I mean on the technology and the supplier side, as well as on the B2C, so the, the, the facing customer, facing player uh, operation, we see obviously three <coughs> key drivers. So one is obviously the vertical integration. So um, where there is a, a a dynamic where operators are looking to integrate with either supplier, either with, uh, uh, that can be technology or can be games that they use. I'm thinking about the media company, I'm thinking about the, the, um, the, the large gaming operator that either find a game or technology that they're using or they would like to use, and it's uh, <coughs> relatively a normal um, dynamic in order to evaluate an acquisition. The other one is obviously it's some kind of, uh, um, you know, is the clear acquisition of a supplier that has already has a key role in the ecosystem of the buyer. And for some reason, it makes sense to acquire the company that comes with the team, that comes with the strategy, and uh, in many cases, being a smaller organization as some kind of entrepreneurial dynamics that in the large organization often is, is lost. So this is the, the, the main driver of the vertical integration as a motivation for, um, for M&A uh, in the segment. <clears throat> Obviously, you have the, the market intensification. So oh, the idea of acquiring uh, you know, a competitor or, or, or a company that has some kind of uh, uh, synergy, uh, clear synergy, because there are some, um, so, some element of uh, horizontal integration. And obviously the market extension, so where the opportunity for somebody to do an acquisition in order to enter a new market. It can be you know, either a geographical market, can be either a product market, it can be really uh, a technology market. So the, the possibility to enter quickly, so the time to market through an acquisition, it's another key driver for acquisition in this space. Uh, the, third, the third driver is the diversification. So 
there are a number of companies uh, that uh, don't come directly from the games, gaming uh, sector, but uh, they see some de clear synergy and there is the interest to extend um, and to get into this, into this segment. I'm thinking about the mobile carrier, I'm thinking about the media groups and so on. So there is a possibility to, through an acquisition to enter the product as well as to enter a specific geography or territory through an acquisition. Uh, the same obviously for uh, new products. So the opportunity that when there is a regulation, a new regulation, or there is a, a new uh, opportunity in a specific market that it's opening or is regulating or is uh, giving the opportunity to, uh, to develop or to enter the market, acquisition is also, uh, also always a, a clear and quick way to, to enter the market. So these, uh, these basically dynamics apply mainly to the, uh, let's say, industrial players. So normally are the, the larger that are looking to the smaller company. Normally that's the dynamic. But uh, there is also an uh, intermediary step. Basically, <coughs> the intermediary step is where you have some financial investors that are acquiring companies that have uh, attracting profile, um, attractive profiles, and basically they believe that those companies, you know, well-funded, uh, will be the target possibly for uh, M&A in the future. So <clears throat> the space basically, it's a, either a direct acquisition from, uh, from companies into smaller smaller or medium, uh, medium target, or is financial investors that are looking to um, opportunity that they see that will develop into target um, where they need obviously you know, some methodology maybe, some, some uh, uh, funds, uh, some access to market, some, uh, maybe some, some uh, additional management. But let's go back to, to this. So obviously, <coughs> we see in the market a number of transactions at all stages of uh, the growth of any business in this industry. So obviously, you have the startup. And in startup, you have probably a couple of phases. So um, then there is uh, you know, the typical round, which is you know, a first round of financing. Um, then they can have you know multiple rounds of financing, and at a certain point, depending on the growth level, so the growth, the established business, the expansion and the maturity, we see we see transaction at any stage of this one, either from financial, uh, in order to um, basically uh, take the advantage of the value creation uh, or prepare company in order to be acquired. By, by larger industrial group, or directly by companies, as we described before, that uh, for different motivation believe that uh, acquisition is the way forward in terms of uh, uh, value creation or expansion. So it depends really where the company is positioned, uh, with any company's position in this industry, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, growth, uh, um, basically, there are several and different opportunities, obviously, at different level. Um, you know, I'm not, not really sure, uh, you know, maybe the audience here or in general, uh, the majority of the company present at Casual Connect, uh, in which phase they are, but for sure, <coughs> the opportunities are similar. And also, the need um, of the industry are, are, very, are very, very similar. What we always suggest is that any stage of the company, obviously, to always be prepared to, to be approached by somebody, especially when, when there is a successful product, successful game, successful technology. Uh, the idea is always to be ready to engage, which means you know, having a, you know, a clear set of documentation, having a clear business plan, having uh, uh, you know, a, a clear way forward. And, uh, and also be prepared that you know, these transactions at the end are very complicated in terms of you know, the legal, the due diligence, the accounting, and so on. So the idea is to be, to be ready at any point to engage, because you know, this is extremely dynamic industry. You see this every day. You know, there are acquisitions happening at any time in all, in all the market. So it's very important to, to, be, to be ready on that. So <clears throat> 
deals are happening, you know, both in the in the social, in the in the esport, uh, at uh, at at any level here. Uh, the, the, the indicator, you guys know very well the indicator, uh, the valuation also vary very much, but we see is as, as an extremely attractive uh, environment uh, for sellers. Uh, we see extremely uh, interesting from a valuation point of view, uh, where in many cases, uh, not like in you know, the industry, there is uh, you know, a number of acquisitions are made, not uh, you know, just uh, looking at the profit, but looking at the, at the growth indicator, at the growth KPIs. <coughs> so regarding eSport, obviously, you know, this is a, a, a vast ecosystem, um, and we see transaction ha and, uh, and M&A dynamics happening at any level. So on the on basically from the, the publisher to the platform, to the teams, to the brands and sponsorship, even the league and the team. This is a growing and developing extremely quickly, as well as obviously the side industry. So, you know, on the sports betting, on the casual, on the, the service of the industry, like payment and so on. So all the segments of the ecosystem of e-sport are obviously growing at, at a credible rate. And this is always, an attractive environment for investors, both for financial and for um, in, in industry investor. So regarding the, <coughs> the financial in general, what they're looking at, obviously they're looking at this industry as uh, one of the, the fastest growing uh, tech industry. Um, the, we have always to remember that the speed is extremely important. And in this case, it's, it's, it's very, very, uh, astonishing for for um, financial investors. So you know we see quarter over quarter uh, the growth based on uh, you know players based on you know all the KPIs you can imagine in the in the casual gaming sport and so on are all growing at a fantastic rate. The forecast of some studies are you know in some cases hard to believe for uh, you know the traditional financial investors. Um, you know, one that we all very often got uh, engaged with is that the statement that uh, e-sport will be bigger than traditional sport within five years. So nobody believed that. Well, nobody that is from the traditional uh, segment believed that. Um, but this, if you look at the trend, it's credible. So, you know, all, all the traditional media and uh, industry needs to, to, to look at that. But what is fascinating for the investors is obviously the speed. But in the case of the, obviously the financial investor, uh, e-sport, but gaming in general, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, it's very attractive from a growth point of view and obviously from the revenue point of view. Um, so they, they look to enter, to invest in this company at a different stage than looking before in order to accelerate the growth in order to maybe uh, intensify the, 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 the position of the companies um, with the, the objective in you know, probably three to five years, but probably in, in three years or less than three years, to have a company that have created value and then will be extremely attractive as a, as a target for investment, either because it's in a specific market or because it's focusing on a specific game or because it's a technology or you know, whatever is the angle, uh, <coughs> the, it will be transformed by a financial investor in something that is uh, an attractive target for acquisition. Uh, the other, the other obviously, are the, the industrial investors. So this is directly the the, the industrial investors. So media, game, gaming group, uh, um, technology, um, uh, mobile carrier, whatever, looking to diversify the, the revenue stream. So <coughs> they want to control part, additional part of the value chain, and obviously to improve the time to market. I do an acquisition that has a presence in Korea. You know, overnight I'm in Korea, or whatever it is. And obviously, it's a much long-term investment. So these two profile of investor has a difference from for the seller. So in the second case, it's basically an exit. So you know, a part of the you know the post-acquisition integration is really an exit where the entrepreneur uh, normally uh, takes the benefit of the capital and uh, and basically move along. In the first case, actually, part of the equation is that. The, the financial investor come in in order to execute a business plan, in order to execute a growth plan, 
So there is a commitment um, and there is a, really a partnership. So there is not an exit per se, even though obviously, and we do this in many cases, we try always to have money up front uh, not to be reinvested for the founder. But the idea is that there is another uh, journey together, which is the journey of the growth of the company based on, on whatever are the, um, the objective that the company can have. So it's two different modality of a deal, the same deal, selling the company or, or selling shares of the company or, or having a capital increase in the company. Um, so from a formal point of view, the same elements need to be looked after. So there is a due diligence process, there is a, 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 obviously a, a, a sale um, a contract, so you know, there are shares or going concern, so there is a, a legal work behind it. But in the first, uh, in the first <coughs> scenario, it's a partnership going forward to execute the business plan. In the second case, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a pure exit, or in the majority case, it's a pure exit. We believe that this industry is extremely um, ready and, uh, and probably has, has a, a way, the way that's developed globally, it's, uh, it's a clear case for a build and buy strategy, where there are you know, companies that are very similar or uh, can be integrated, and this integration can be done either by a financial, a financial buyer uh, or by an industrial investor. So, <clears throat> Improving market positioning, you know, sharing marketing and management technique, expansion in new geographic market, increase product base. So the idea of putting medium size or small and medium sized company together in order to create value, uh, it's a very recognized methodology in other industries that are being uh, start to be applied now in the in the gaming and in sport, uh, both B two C and B two C. Obviously, you have you know cost saving, you have financial leverage opportunity that are not normally part of a buy and build strategy. So, oh, I don't know if you guys, anybody have some specific question, general question? Um, going through the transactions, diligence and stuff like that, be, any differences between an M&A &A with an esports company and other kinds of gaming companies? Uh, valuation is always obviously a very, a very important element and a very uh, key element in the transaction. So um, normally the idea is try to evaluate if there are some comparable, some, some comparable transaction that uh, can be used as a guideline. Uh, for example, we're working uh, on a transaction in India and uh, you know, Tencent made an acquisition that has created basically the standard. So, you know, since Tencent bought this company for whatever multiple, even though, you know, without that transaction it would look kind of off the chart, uh, that become obviously the, 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 the reference. Um, it changed in term of, not really in term of if it's its port, if it's, uh, if it's uh, um, social, social skill games, it look basically at the driver of growth. So if the driver of growth are obviously, you know, um, very steep and look extremely promising, there are opportunities to enter a new market, uh, all the KPIs are growing, that's are the, uh, the, the, the element that will be taken in account, especially, you know, from the seller in order to maximize the value. Uh, thank you for the India reference. I'm from India. And uh, I appreciate your point of, uh, so of, of valuation. Uh, the question for you, sir, is... Uh, you know, is it, does it start with PE, like price earning, and then do we do multiples on that? Uh, there are two questions, actually. So one is the foundation or the basis of valuation. And the other question is, when you talk about markets like India, you know, under-monetized but vast opportunity, how do we put that in the equation? Is it multiples on the PE, or are they random values? Um, just, just your thoughts. We, we, especially with India, we, we see an, a number of metrics. So oh, definitely the, the main one needs to be the growth, which you know, somebody taking for granted uh, with a country like, like India at the moment where India is now. But uh, we see multiple on the revenues. So you know, using a matrix on the revenues, understanding that the bottom line now is not the priority, but the interest of the investor is to get hold of that growth, therefore the revenues. Uh, otherwise, uh, are really, especially you look at the, 
the, the pre-IPO or the post-IPO is obviously, you know, go back on EBITDA multiples. But uh, we see a number of transactions now uh, in India, but in other markets as well, that are done on, on sales or revenue, or revenue multiples. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.